Go back even farther is Taco Bell and Subway. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was Fist of the North Star. It said slight British accent. And I was like, what? If I could choose one, I'd be that one so I could make people fart and be like, hey, my old damage. <gasps> yes! No! <laughs> what? <sighs> <sighs> When's the next season? Oh my. You're watching convention coverage. All right, well, welcome. You, you are a cornerstone, sir. I mean, you, you've done a lot. you voice actor, Power Ranger. I mean, that's that's tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Power Ranger, then voice actor. Man. Whoa. Uh, that's and the then, order. And then you know. musician, dad? Yes, that too. I mean, yes, dad. Now, you want to go back even farther, is Taco Bell and Subway. <laughs> uh, I was a sandwich artist. A sandwich artist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is anybody else a sandwich artist? <laughs> yeah, all right. Thanks. Don't <laughs> Don't mention Taco Bell. Uh, I like Taco Bell. <laughs> I am a sucker for their fake nacho cheese. Yeah. That fake Taco Bell nacho cheese, the chips. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just give me a big bowl of that. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. disgusting. Just eat cheese. There you go. No. Very um, all right. Well, hey, if you don't know who I am, I'm Johnny Young Bosch. Uh, I was Adam in Power Rangers, Black Ranger, eventually Green Ranger, and then back to black. Um, <laughs> And uh, if you're still watching this show, the 30th, I can't believe it's almost been 30 years, but the 30th anniversary is coming out, I believe, April on Netflix. Um, I know it's Netflix, but I think it's April. I'm not 100% on the actual date, but, and I came back for that, so that's pretty cool. I can't say much about it, but I can say that I'm, I'm back for that. Uh, and so that's pretty cool. Bleach is back. Thousand Year Blood War. Man, we had a fight for that, didn't we? Yeah! Woo! I signed that petition years ago. <laughs> we made it come back. And then uh, you guys are waiting for the dub to be completely out before you watch it, some of you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, make sure you watch it because, hey, if we fought to get it back and you don't watch it, then it may not continue to be here. Yeah. So make sure you watch it. I think the thir 13th episode should be out. So, I don't know, is the 12th episode out yet in the dub? Is, that one's out? All right, so we should be on track then, maybe another week or so. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's been pretty awesome. Who's, who's actually been watching it? Yeah, sub or dub, doesn't matter. Just been watching it? Yeah, cool. What'd you guys think of that seventh episode? Ooh, yeah, that was one when I saw that, I was like, oh man, I can't wait to get into that. So just like Bash, one of my favorite foods is donuts. And usually when I get donuts, I also get coffee to go with it. So uh -huh. I was wondering, what do you think Bash's Starbucks order would be? I have no idea, because I'm not a big coffee drinker. So, you know, it, it intimidates me actually when I go to Starbucks. <laughs> I'm just like, eh, I'll just take that thing. Um, <laughs> so, uh, pff, what, what's a very sugary? Like a frappuccino. Oh, any frappuccino, man. Yeah, like Did you guys remember that? that was know? it the unicorn frappuccino? Unicorn. Yeah, it was like all pink and everything. It had like 150 grams of sugar in it. Oh, he'd definitely get that yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> Anything sweet and sugary, he would get. Yeah. I thought you were going to ask, like, what kind of donuts would he get? Um, but uh, I think he, he's, again, like an assorted kind of donut guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Although whenever I go to a donut shop, I just get donut holes. I don't know why. I'm just, I just, I just like donut holes. <laughs> that sounds bad. You're gonna just pop them as glaze. I'm just a glaze guy. I really like glazed donuts. How do you feel about the new Trigun reboot? I, uh, when I first saw the announcement, I was super excited about it. Um, I, I can't really say much about it as far as like I haven't worked on it, so I know it's it's out today, right? Yeah, the first so, episode. I, I'm sure it's gonna be good. You know, I hope that they do it justice. I'm sure they will. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we uh, will see how that goes. Okay, well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So since there's a huge gap in between the original run of Bleach and also the last year of Blood War, mm -hmm. um, how did you feel um, when it came back? Like not only as a fan, but like as a voice actor. I mean, I, mean, I was excited. Um, I was really excited because, I mean, you know, earlier on, there was this, this hint about his mother 
And I remember, I don't remember exactly which episode it was. It was early, it was like maybe episode four or something where he's like, it's, it's just a brief moment where he's like walking in the woods or something and he gets a little emotional thinking about his mom. And, um, and I remember that was when I really connected to the character of Ichigo. Like there were other moments, but like that, I was like, ah, I can definitely, I, I can be this guy. Um, and so that was something I wanted to get more into about like that side of the story and his mom and all that stuff. And so finally being able to do that um, with Thousand Year Blood War, I mean, it's just been great. I've been like anxiously waiting for, for that and hopeful that we'd be able to do that. I thought it was done, that it was gone, you know? Um, so I'm super excited, super happy that we're back and being able to get into that. Um, it's kind of like the way I felt with uh, Devil May Cry 5. After we did 4, they went and they went off and started doing a whole reboot. Um, thankfully, that didn't take off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because then they were like, uh, you guys want to do this? And it was like, yes. And then we got to, again, sort of the same thing. We got to like fulfill that, you know, the story at least. Um, so I'm excited to be back. Um, and every time I go in, you know, uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's just, truly, I just, I love the character, I love the story um, and the world. And so it's, it's super exciting for me to, to get back in there, you know, and, and, and there's, you know, and they trust me with the character, you know, and, and again, so it's like I can make mild adjustments to the dialogue to make it fit the, the flaps, but also just make sense for me as well, you know, as the character, however many years later, you know. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, Have a no good problem. one. Yeah. Here was actually what I wanted to talk about. Like, how are you able, like, just being a part of a series with so much history, so much legacy, and then, you know, now suddenly being the main star of it, like, how were you able to kind of just fit yourself in there and, you know, really, really make, you know, really help Nero, like, stand out? Like, just make it, making a character really stand out. That's probably, yeah, that's it. That's interesting. Um, I have to go back, like, I was familiar with the original game um, and just playing the, because I played it. Um, and so when I first was introduced to the possibility of, of being in this series was actually DMC3. Um, I auditioned for Dante. Oh, really? um, and I can't remember if I had... No, it was Dante. I auditioned for Dante um, and didn't get it. Um, but then I got called in when they were doing DMC4 for a completely different character, Nero, um, whose really story I didn't have all of the details of. You know, I just knew that he was like, um, actually, as I read it off the page, I was like, this feels like Dante. What's the, what's the difference, you know? Um, but in fact, that's also something I had talked to the director about because I was conflicted because Dante was also in it. And I'm like, well, how do I make this different from who Dante is, you know? And because and when I read it off the page, it feels like Dante. And, and um, Yuji stopped, who's the director, and said, Johnny, you are Nero. <laughs> and then he just walked away. That's all he told me. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, what am I supposed to do with that? Um, and then, so I just thought, all right, well, um, oh, I guess I'll just be me as, as this character, you know? And then when I really started to pick it apart, I'm like, well, he's younger, he's a bit naive, he's a bit, you know, he is, you know, kind of cocky like Dante would be, but we're, we're still kind of very different, you know? Um, and the other great thing is that Nero has this relationship, you know, with Kirie, you know, someone he cares about, and that's really what kind of like drives his, uh, it's his motivation, really. Um, and so I did that, I said DMC4. And that one was like, you know, when that came out, it did well, but people were like, I want Dante in it, you know? I want to be able to play Dante. So it was very, like the fans were sort of divided, you know, in that because they were so used to Dante in DMC one through three that all of a sudden they're gonna have to play this new character. And so it was like, it was a, it was a strange place for me to be because it was like on one hand, a lot of people liked him. And on the other hand, there were people that are like, no, I hate him. Um, so I was like, ah, in a weird place, you know? But I just played the character the way I thought. Um, and then it wasn't until they tried to do that reboot when the fans were just like, no, absolutely. You know, we do not like it. And then, uh, then they re-released DMC4, but like special edition, you know? And then the fans were like, okay, yeah, this is what we like. And Nero's not that bad now, you know? <laughs> he's like, I, we can accept him, you know? Cause he's still in the world that we like. 
and then and then for five, five was really, for, I, I'm trying, I'm like trying not to like reveal any spoilers, you know, but you guys should play it if you haven't played it, because um, I'm probably just going to spoil it. But to find out who my father was, we, we only hinted at it in four. So really the fans didn't get all that, you know, they didn't get the completion of that story, you know. Um, and so doing five really let the fans who were involved in the world and understood the world and they, then they were like I can get behind who he is now because he is part of the family he is part of this big thing and so you know I don't know I, th I know I'm kind of like going all over the place but I'm trying to make sense of it all but um, yeah for me it was really just the wait a minute I, I lost track of what the question was <laughs> I went off on a tangent um, Remind me of the original question. Yeah, the, the original question was like just like helping Nero like stand out. Like what did you yeah. do? Like help him so, stand out. And and really it was like knowing that we had that chance because it was me just playing this character as I felt was correct to play this character. And when, yeah, I think if anybody went back without anybody that didn't know the series and played four, they they can get behind it because they didn't have all the backstory, right? Um, so for me, it was just. Uh, committing to the character, I think, really, and committing to the world, and believing myself as the character. And then, but, but it wasn't until five that I really got to, you know, I don't know, just reveal who he was in that, you know? Okay. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. That, honestly, in, it? in some strange way, it does. Thank okay, you so good. much. <laughs> right, Johnny, that, you're, you're an idiot, but I'll accept uh -huh. it. I recently heard you in JoJo. I uh -huh. loved the accent, it was great. As an aspiring actor, did you just ha were you using that accent before, or is it no. just kind of something you had to make up on the fly? Had to make it up, yeah. Because uh, when I did the audition, actually when I saw the audition, I just had a picture of it, and, and I, thought it, I thought it was Fist of the North Star. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know? <laughs> and so I was, like, I was like, oh, sweet, you know? Um, but then I saw that it said slight British accent, and I was like, what? Um, and the more I read it, I was like, oh, maybe, because like sometimes when you get an audition, they, they, everything's a secret. So they change the names of the characters and the title. So I thought they were trying to trick me or something. But then it said slight British accent. So I was like, that's, that's odd. That's, I don't think that's correct. Um, but I did, but, and I didn't know how, what's a slight, what does that mean? Slight British, right? So I was like, I don't, I don't even know how to do slight British accent. So I just did full British accent. Um, and, and then I got the role. Um, but then they were like, but it's, it's too British. Can you make it slight British? And, and I was like, and I asked, I was like, well, what, is, what does that mean? Um, am I just like, well, has he been in America for 10 years? You know, and, and he's kind of lost some words or whatever. Um, and then the answer was, like, yeah, basically, something like that, I guess. You know, it was like, well, let's try it out. Let's find out. So it was like finding this strange place where it wasn't like, you know, it was didn't have too much of an accent where, you know, people could still hear it and understand it, you know, maybe it wasn't too thick or whatever, right? Um, and so that's where we landed on it. So it wasn't something that I'd been walking around using all the time, it was something that kind of like, it was like on the job, like we're with the director and be like, what do you think of this? This feels about right to you, and like, yeah. And so we would adjust some words here or there, um, and let's make this one not as British or whatever, right? So it was like finding the place for that. Um, so it was kind of strange. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> I always wonder, like, how did it feel like transitioning first from Power Rangers to voice acting? Because it just felt like a, a huge leap in direction for your acting. It is. It's, it's absolutely different, you know. Um, you know, after Power Rangers, I had a really tough time getting any on-camera work. Um, I was very fortunate to be on Power Rangers to begin with. Um, and so afterwards, I, I wasn't sure, there was a few years where I wasn't even sure if I could continue acting, um, but then I stumbled into voiceover, and it didn't matter what I looked like, you know, because on camera, it's very, you have to look a certain way. And at that time, especially, it was like I either had to be a Caucasian or an Asian, you know, and I'm kind of like somewhere in between, you <laughs> yeah. know, and they, they were, what are you exactly? Um, and so I'd go in and, and you know, the, the role would say Chinese guy, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm going to try to see if I can pull it off. But if this guy looks more Asian than me or more Chinese, then that guy's going to get it, you know. Um, and I felt that throughout, you know, and then that my agent would send me out for, for something that was like a Caucasian role. And well, I, I kind of didn't fit the mold, really, you know, so I had a hard time. So 
being able to, like once I was able to get into voiceover, um, I, it was like, wait, it doesn't matter what I look like. You know, I can play various different characters as long as I deliver in the acting, then I'm gonna be okay. And I could survive, you know, in this place for a little bit. And so I kind of, that became my career. You know, I'm like, well, this is where I can live for a while, you know, until this other stuff can work out, you know, so yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks so much, and I can't sure. wait to see you in the anniversary special, uh, the anniversary season. Yeah, yeah, man. Awesome, thanks. What was it like, you know, portraying a anti-hero, a anti-hero who pretty much wanted to protect his sister and make a better world, but also do all the evil things, but, you know, not knowing what he was doing? Personally, you said you said not knowing what he's doing. Yes, being blinded by his rage for his for his you know. People, yeah, I mean, I could see that, that, but I could see that a little bit throughout. You know, um, things like that. You know, certain things happening that kind of made him make choices that you would think were incorrect. But it's like it was it's a chess game, right? So if you've played chess. Yes. You can't just play chess like, oh, he did that, so I'm going to do this, or this person did the move is this way, so I got to do this. No, it's not. It's not just reactive. You've got to think a few moves ahead, and I think that's what's so great about Code Geass um, is that, and Lelouch is that he's playing a few moves ahead. You know, and the series is like that too. You don't really realize that r until you get to the end, and then you're like, oh wait, he did all of that because he made those choices even though they were difficult or wrong um, to be able to, you know, to be able to take it to a place where he can ultimately bring everyone back together and against him. I, it's a little bit of a spoiler, but not completely. You guys would probably enjoy it. It's the Breaking Bad of anime. It's like you get to watch somebody, you know, just kind of go in a, in a dark place, you know, to make things sort of right again. Just like a lot of people, you were like, the first guy I saw, well, like besides uh, martial arts films, you're like the first Asian protagonist that I saw on the screen. And um, in terms of like uh, representation and diversity, how do you feel about it today, especially in the uh, Asian community as a whole? I think we're getting there, right? Um, you know, for sure. I think, um, you know, um, I guess I don't think about it that much, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, it was something I thought about when I struggled with it because I couldn't find anything that I fit in. But part of my problem is I'm not completely, like 100% Asian. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'd have an easier time um, to do things, um, I guess if I'm talking about acting wise, right, right or on camera really more specifically, mm -hmm. um, if I was completely Asian. You know, I'm, I'm like a minority among minorities because I'm mixed, right. you know? Um, yeah, so, mixed too, yeah. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like, it. you know, it's a little less accepted you know, right. even amongst minorities, you know, it, it took a while. Not mm -hmm. saying that you guys aren't accepting, you know, but, but if you think about in general, you know, growing up, if you're a minority, if you're mixed, you understand what I'm talking about, you know, because right. you, you weren't completely accepted even right. around your Asian friends or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think you either didn't speak the language. Or yeah, or you can't like speak that. the language yeah. or whatnot, right? So it's, but I, I, I think we're absolutely there, you mm -hmm. know. I, like here, like at a con, you could really see um, that we are all different sizes, shapes, and colors, and it doesn't even matter, right. you know. You know, it doesn't matter what you are. You can watch something and, <clears throat> and I like it, you like it, you know, it's, it's whatever. So it's not something I really think about. Right. Um, and I think as far, but as far as them making more stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm seeing it more. Um, I don't see as much like them pushing forward as far as like, you know, Asian you know, stuff. I see a little bit here and there, but not completely, you right. know. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's, is it something that, that is, I don't know, it's, it's like, I don't think that it's anything that anyone's like saying, no, we don't want to do these things. Right. Um, but I definitely see other minority, you know, types being pushed more than Asian, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but again, it's not across the board, you know, and, and it's hard to do across the board. Right. That's the other problem. Right. So, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? Just at, I don't know. I guess it's going on a strange <laughs> thing. But like I, I was watching... Um, the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, right? Because I was like, I just got to check it out. Because I really liked Lord of the Rings, 
you know, or at least the first bit. I, Hobbit was kind of a bummer because um, <laughs> yeah. I really liked Hobbit too. But then seeing that, and, and I just didn't, I didn't get why. It was like, well, you're just throwing them in there, throwing minorities in there everywhere, right? right? And it just right. it doesn't make sense, you know. It was like, because we are multicultural, we're going to do that there as well. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't see any Asians. I saw yeah. two Asians, and they were extras in the crowd. You know, I was like, wow. there's an Asian. He just <laughs> died, you know? And it's like, and so right. like, where are the Asians, you know? Like a Leonardo um, DiCaprio meme. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but again, at the same time, I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, right. it's not something I fully care about, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, you know, at this point, it's... If I really was was out to make something, I would just do it myself, you know. Yeah, um, and that's kind of I think where we're at now. Right. Um, I think uh, I, I'm not expecting any big studios to do anything right, right. because they yeah. screw up most things, you know, yeah. or they go way beyond what they should do, you know, and it, and it ends up becoming more about the, the the nationality or the representation than the actual story. And I think right. you kind of lose some of the things that people love about stories in general, you know? Um, and so, again, I don't want to go off on any kind of weird rant because it doesn't really bother me that much, mm -hmm. um, you know? And in fact, I feel like there's more opportunities in lower budgets, you know? I was able to go work with uh, Dolph Lundgren and Harvey Keitel in a film, wow. you know? Um, and so, and that should, I don't know, I guess it's coming hopefully this year at some point uh, to be released. So that was a pretty cool experience, you know? Right. And that, I didn't, there was nothing but love throughout. And it yeah. wasn't, but it wasn't about like, we, oh, we need to have a plug in some Asian guy. No, right. it was just like, we need somebody who can do this thing, you know, and I was the right person for the job right. because I could do some action, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but I was only supposed to be there for a very small amount of time. Um, only supposed to be there for a small role for right. two weeks. But then Dolph Lundgren changed what he wanted, who he wanted to be in in the role that he was, and so that elevated my character to like, you know, main henchman. So um, and then you, you know, stole the whole film. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> oh sweet. So I get to do the main fight against you know Stephen Lang, who's I don't right. know if you're Stephen Lang. He's Lang. like the bad guy in Avatar. Mm -hmm. um, cool. But I got to do main fights with him, you know, and then at the end of it, I was, I was directing the action. And I was like, what's going on here? This is great. Right. Um, but it was because of time and, you know, but it was nothing but love there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I can kind of see all, it's all over the place right now. Right. We're a bit of a mess, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think the more we kind of just kind of move forward, again, it's like one foot in front of the other until we kind of yeah. get through this mess that we're in kind of right now. And then we can just kind of be like at a con. Mm -hmm. where everybody accepts everyone and it's just like hey there's nothing but love here you know um so this we it, and this is growing too right. you know if you yeah. just if you look at it remember back i don't know just think you know five ten years ago not nearly as many conventions no and now there's one every now we other now we're like we, we, we like run the world it's like we're all yeah. over the place you know <laughs> nerds unite yeah. you know i was talking to somebody else where they were like you remember when like um Anime was kind of frowned upon. Yeah. It's like, oh, right. you nerd, you watch an anime. <laughs> but now everyone's like, wait, you haven't on. seen this anime? What are you? you know? yeah. Right. Hide so, in my dad's shed while yeah. I'm watching it on a you know video cassette TV combo. There exactly, you go. Exactly. So <laughs> it's it's kind of strange because I think it's it's almost like we we're in a world where all the old people are thinking old things and, and trying to like adjust to things and it's like, ah, let's just be who we are. Mm -hmm. You know? Like here at a con, and it's like, let the parents kind of, you guys can retire, you know, <laughs> you guys can just go sit down and let us kind of like live, you know, and, right. and just, you know, be cool with each other like we are at a con, you know, bit of a rant, but that's so not that I meant it to that's be, awesome. but uh, you started it. <laughs> I'm glad I was the one that started it. <laughs> yeah. Who is your favorite character that you've voiced? Sure, I like all of them. You know, I commit to every single one of them 100 percent oh. as I'm doing them. So it's hard for me to choose one. They're all they're all my babies. Pick your favorite you know? child. Thank you. Very difficult. Wait. How did you start getting into voice acting? Like, oh, you can't do it like me, man. I I basically worked on a film with uh, some Japanese stunt guys, and the audio didn't work, so I had to go dub myself. And mm. as I was dub myself, a producer walked by, heard my voice, said, "Hey, you got a good hero voice. Will you come audition for this animation stuff I'm doing?" I said, <laughs> "Sure." And I got the role for Vash and Trigun, and that kind of launched my career. So, 
Not exactly the way most people do it. Yeah, so unfortunately for me, it was just like a right place at the right time. You got lucky. For you, just start acting. Find a place to start acting, you know, and then just keep throwing that dart at the board until it lands in the place you want it to be. You're awesome. Thank you. Thanks, brother. What other advice can you give a guy like me or anyone else who wants to be? Are you acting? Actor? I'm trying. Trying. Start acting. acting. Start acting. acting. Act. Yeah. Take don't don't try anymore. Just do. You know? Do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stop <laughs> trying. Find a place to start acting. If it's theater or if whatever, you know. Um, and I don't know what they have out here, but they've got to have some kind of drama log or backstage. Just start acting. Because if you get a role, let's say you just want to do voiceover. If you end up getting an audition and you can't act, it's done. It's over, you know, or if you so happen to get in there and you can't deliver, it's done because it starts spreading. The guy can't act or the guy can't do it. So start acting. Make sure that you can you can change and adjust on the fly because you'll go in there sometimes, think that this is the way you want to play the character, but the director is like, no, this it has to be something different, and then you have to adjust on the fly. Yeah. If you're here in Sacramento, STC B Street, you can go to the comedy spot and take improv classes. Go learn. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you, Star College, yeah. Thanks, American Jamie. River. But of all the roles that you've done, a lot of iconic roles, what are you most proud of? Like, whether it's a moment or whether it's a specific role. Oh man, there's I don't know. Um, there's so many that I I really don't know. It's all of them at different times. You know, I mean, it's easier for me to say which ones did nothing for me. Like Guy in Yellow, you know, <laughs> does nothing for me. I don't care about that guy. You know, nobody's gonna remember Guy in Yellow. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, it'd be, you know, any of these iconic ones, Lelouch, Ichigo, Vash, you know, all of those, Artemis even, you know, Artemis was a lot of fun, um, especially the older stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just kind of across the board, you know, they're all very important to me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Iron-Blooded Orphans is Orga. That character really resonated with me. So as you embody his character, uh, how would you describe his criteria for hiring pretty much? <laughs> for the group. I mean, I got the emblem tatted on my neck, dude. I'm ready to yeah. join. Let's go. <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't know. I think uh, he, he would come across to me as a guy that would accept people that are, I guess, willing to die for the cause, you know? I'm down. That's what it is. You <laughs> Let's know? go. I'm here Even for the Even him to the very <laughs> end, right? Yeah. All right, cool. It was Thank a fun you, man. series. Appreciate I enjoyed it. it. Yeah. Every character you've ever voiced is in a free-for-all battle royale to the death. Uh, Who dies first and who's the last one standing? Uh, Nobi. I think uh, Nobi from Doraemon um, would die first. Um, who would last? Who would be the winner? Yes. The winner? Oof. Mm. I mean, it's going to be, what, Broly or Ichigo? Broly. You know, or, or Nero. One of those, I'm not sure. One of those guys. I want Vash to win. You want Vash to win? He's always just incredibly hey, he lucky. Probably, he's so he, good. He might, he might fool them, you know? Yeah. He's a bit Lelouch of uses his Gios to control everyone. Unless, Gia, yeah, he can use Gios and they kill themselves, you know? Or... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, for you to retell that one story about the homeless woman in traffic in a way that fits the pacing of the line? Oh, my goodness. I don't know how to tell that story in such a short amount of time. Uh... No, uh, there's no way, there's no way. Um, unfortunately, if you haven't heard the story, I'll tell it sometime, but uh, I don't have the time to tell it today, but uh, sadly, I threw a bag of quarters at a woman's face and she went down. Uh, but it wasn't out of anger, it was out of generosity. I'll, I'll leave you with that. It's a great story. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, your favorite anime attack of all your characters? I really don't. I don't know. There's been so many, and, and then I've, I'm sure I'm forgetting all the various different game attacks and whatnot, <laughs> so I'll just go with... Moon Kai! Yeah. Thank you. Good one. Do you consider what you do to be following in the tradition of Mel Blanc? Again, something I've never thought about. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't even really, I mean, I remember seeing his name at the end of a cartoon or something, um, but never even really thought about, like, me, I guess I am. I think I'm you a are. voice actor, you know, so, yeah. I, I think you and Steve Bloom are two of the closest fellas to him these days. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I guess that's in interesting. That's interesting perspective. I, I have just something I didn't think about. Yeah, I guess, I guess so, though, in a way. Yeah. Well... Keep up the good work, and uh, us Generation Xers, we can still get along with the Millennials and Zoomers. Okay. All right. Thank you, man. 
If you were a yokai, would you be brave, mysterious, tough, charming, or heartful? Um, mysterious, I think mysterious. I'll go with. Yeah. Well, which one was uh, Cheek Squeak, the one that made you fart? <laughs> I think if I could choose one, I'd be that one, so I could make people fart and be like, <laughs> 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 made you fart in front of all these people? All right, go ahead. What's it like to be a dead weight? Oh! I'll show Shots you fired. dead weight. <laughs> <laughs> nice cosplay. Amazing. Emotional damage. Emotional damage. Nice. Uh, so I was interested in how working on Bleach was different than working on regular anime because there's so many different voice actors. Regular so anime. anime. Like, like 13 episodes or like 50 episodes. Oh, well, there's more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's more. <laughs> yeah, there's there's more. Then, then there's more also to get into the character, more time to develop who the character is or find out who the character is, right? And there's more to uh, see. Um, yeah, I mean, well, it's 366 plus now. There's more. So, yeah. you know, um, I don't know. Awesome. You, you grow right. closer, I think. You grow closer to the ones that you're around a lot longer. Yeah. You feel more like them. Or they end up being more like you. Uh, what helped you develop with the character of Ichigo, and did you have to change anything when it came to the Thousand Year Blood War? Wait, what helped me to develop the character? Yeah, the, the character. It's like, really just finding a way to relate to the character, finding a place you know, to be that character. I didn't think about the voice, I just let it happen. Um, and then coming into Thousand Year Blood War is just added on top of that, you know? There's more texture. You know, I had to think about, all right, he's been doing this for a long time now. So what's his attitude? How does he approach this, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's really just him after so many years of just being a, and, and you know, he's substitute Soul Reaper, but yeah. man, he's a Soul Reaper, all right? He's been doing it for a long time now. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. All right. Favorite line you ever did? Favorite line? Mm hmm dialogue line. My balls unit's not working properly. Appreciate you. <laughs> Good luck finding that anime. Hi, I love Danganronpa. Uh, how did you approach um, voicing both Hajime and Azuru Kamakura, like two very different personalities in one body? That one I remember, that one was fast. That one I remember there was not a lot of time to be able to get the work done and it was just pages. And so there wasn't images or anything like that. And so it was really just, once I found out where the voice should be, then I just kind of stuck with that. And then I got to experience the mystery and the things that went around and then, just a slight alteration to the voice, you know, after that, right? So, uh, I don't know. It's, and it's been a long time yeah. since I worked on that one. But uh, super cool. In fact, I'll just say this real quick. That was one that I completely forgot about until somebody brought it to my table years ago. And I was like, Dangan Rumpa. Well, how do you, because like, it was top secret. I didn't know the name of it. It was like, I think it was like D something and it had like a number, right? Or it was like top secret. Um, so I didn't know. I was like, oh, I'm not in this. And like, no, no, you're in this. I'm like, no, I, I know what I've done. I'm not in this. And they're like, no, no, you're in this. And they show me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what's your name? <laughs> I, I completely forgot about it. And then afterwards, I had to look it up. And I was like, oh, that's right. Tony, Tony it's, Oliver it's directed niche. this one. And then I kind of started, some of those things started to come back to me. Yeah. And I ended up just like watching a bunch of it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. No problem, yeah. What was your emotional reaction to, like, the developments in Thousand Year Blood War, the first part. Without you, spoilers. With Ichigo developments in the first part. <gasps> yes! No! <laughs> what? <laughs> <sighs> When's the next season? Oh my. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you for playing Guy, my favorite character, my favorite game. You guys <laughs> right. made through a lot of tough times, but uh, were there any creative liberties you took when you were acting that actually made it through? to the final product, counter to what the director Oh my wanted. gosh, mm, that was such a long time ago. Um, and I don't recall. Just in general, any, any? In general. Yeah. Well see, the th strange thing of that one is like, I was, I was working on that as well as Dot Hack. Oh. And so, I love that Kuhn too. was, you know, he's a bit of a womanizer, you know, and then Guy was afraid of women. You know, so there's this weird thing at, at the same studio. So it was like, which guy am I today? Um, <laughs> and so, I, and it was so long ago, I don't really remember too many details of that, yeah. Something I've had a really hard time with when I've tried to, uh, or when I've, tried, when, I've, when I've learned voice acting is what my just normal voice is, like where my voice usually sits, because it seems like it changes all the time by situation, and um, uh, I'm, 
wondering how you found out what kind of characters you could just naturally play, what you, you were most comfortable with, where you, how you found your voice, I guess, is the um, Really, I kind of found my voice um, just, just doing it, really, and hearing it back. Um, I think for me, just as, as a regular person, whenever I t I'm, I'm mumbly, you know, I mumble when I talk, you know, um, and I'm a, I'm a low talker as well, you know, um, so I'm not, I don't, I don't project, you know, I'm not like that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, it just, it was, it was, um, going through the paces of various different characters. Really, I kind of was like on the job training, um, and, uh, you know, and then, even just like just doing my own rehearsals and just practicing and just playing out various types of characters. You know, if I saw a movie or something, I'm like, oh, that's a really interesting character. And then I, how would I do that? You know, mm. and, then, and then just trying to find a way to create something, you know, strange or weird or cool or whatever it really was. Uh, and then in doing that, you kind of find out the limitations, you know, and then you see, okay, is that an actual limitation or can I push past that? Can I do something else? You know, and then you do other things where like in Iron Blooded Orphans, you know, it was a character that was a bit lower tone, you know, and I felt like out of place a little, you know, it wasn't a character that I would normally get. Um, and so for me, I thought, okay, well, he's like a soldier, he's in war, like what are they, there's a lot of shouting. And so when I drove to work, which was like 30 to 45 minutes, like I would just scream and shout the entire time going there. So that whenever I got in there, you just get this kind of like a low tone, raspy, sounds like this guy's been through the paces, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe, you know, it, maybe it's not, it's something more you would feel rather than, I guess, actually hear some you could hear a little of that texture in there but it's just you know kind of finding that you know and then pushing to where it was even like when I came in for Broly like uh they didn't ask me to audition but I was like yeah let me do a couple things and send it to you and see if you guys are going to be okay with this because you know again not something I would typically do and so I'm like all right well this is where I would play the character and then they're like yeah um so it's just finding out you know if the shoe fits, you know? And if not exactly, how are you gonna wear it, right? Because um, everyone has, you know, you can, you can play just about anything. It's just a matter of like finding a way to make that true. How can I, how would I be that person, you know? And then finding whatever it is in, in whatever world, whatever character, you gotta find one small piece for each ego, it's like him and his, like his relationship to his friends and wanting to protect it, you know, his family and friends and, and you know, his relationship to his mother or, or that memory of his, like there's different things that in each character that I go, I can connect to that. I can be this person. So then it's just finding those little things, you know, and then going, all right, well, I could be real, you know, just try to make that real for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank Thanks for sticking much. around.